Knowledge is power. And this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with your host, Jen Solis. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230. Or toll free. Toll free. 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Jen Solis. Hi, everybody. I'm glad they put that disclaimer at the beginning of the show because I'm fired up and mad. Um... This is Jen Solis, and to my right is Kurt Dukoc, and we have B.J. William Beach Baker in the house. Also, our special guest today is North Las Vegas City Councilman for Ward 1, Isaac Barone. Um, To get started with our breaking news, how many people were at the county meeting when they made a grab for all the pot dispensaries in Las Vegas? Today, um, Clark County commissioners voted to allow 18 dispensaries in unincorporated Clark County. 11 dispensaries will be allowed within the city of Las Vegas, and four will be allowed in the city of North Las Vegas. A portion of those uh, left will go to Henderson and Mesquite. Boulder City, uh, as you know, rejected the dispensaries, and the, the state is not going to allow more than 40 dispensaries in Clark County. What do you think of that, uh, Councilman Barone? Hmm. Well, um, I'm a little bit disappointed. Uh, I, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't. Um, I guess uh, the the big thing is, you know, I, I I thought we were making friendships with our with our friends there in Clark County, and I always thought that friends talked things out before they made decisions. That's generally the case. That's generally the case. So in them in them claiming that they can uh, they can take 18 dispensaries, are they acting like a municipality or a county seat or? Well, I mean, that, that's one of the frustrations that one of my colleagues ha, ha, has asked, you know, in, in, in past, you know, uh, sometimes they, uh, they, can, they can act as a, um, a county government and sometimes they can act as a municipality. And, you know, uh, sometimes the, the municipalities, they have conflicting interests. So, you know, uh, uh, of course, um, I think this might be one of them. You know, I, I'm concerned also because if you look at the land span in North Las Vegas, it doesn't it cover like over a hundred miles. Yeah, we have a hundred square miles uh, of, of of land, and of course, our, our population is pr- pretty well spread ac- uh, across that. Four dispensaries. I, I mean, I know people are saying uh, that uh, this is all for one thing or another. I thought this was about medicine, I making this medicine is about- ab- uh, medicine available for, uh, for a, the widest uh, amount of people. And you know, we have so we have a, a relatively large population. And four dispensaries to be shared um, uh, 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 you know, across our, our 100 square miles of city and 225,000 people. It, it doesn't seem like it's equitable. Yeah. How does that serve the community at large? Uh, yeah, actually, I really, I really can't see that conceivably happening, um, you know, to, to serve the community. The other thing is, is that if you don't have a dispensary within 25 miles, people can grow their own. Mm-hmm. So basically, they're, they, Clark County, in doing this, they've, they've kind of left uh, North Las Vegas to be almost like a grow-your-own area there. Well, I, I do have um, some faith that, you know, of course, that be, you know, we've already started on, on our own um, uh, land use and uh, our own land use and zoning. Uh, we, we started that, you know, we, we've already had uh, some, some executive meetings. And, of course, um, we're having a, a, our, our another town hall tomorrow night in this very special town, uh, uh, town hall session at 4.30 p.m. at, at uh, North Las Vegas City Hall. Uh, everyone's invited to come by and see what we're doing. And I think, you know, of course, our regulations, our zoning, are going to be a little bit more nimble, uh, a little bit more, uh, I, I think, uh, versatile compared to the other, uh, the, the other entities. Can you explain how your process um, for getting a dispensary in North Las Vegas would be different than Clark County? I mean, I know Clark County, they just had this big rush to, uh, to get their applications in on time. But North Las Vegas seems to be taking a different route. Can you explain that route? Well, you know, uh, we're looking to see what, what everyone else is doing, uh, uh, obviously. And um, uh, some people are, are, are urging us, you know, to, to do what county did, you know, and kind of like pre-select. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, does that it, has that really served them? Uh, it, it seems like, um, dare I say it, you know, uh, again, we're, this is supposed to be about medicine. It seems like more like anything else has been about 
who your uh, who, um, who is speaking for you, who your lobbyist is. So, so you think it, it would your guys is, um, I think your guys is process leaves it leaves it more fair and equitable across the board than than maybe them the Clark County selecting certain ones to send up to the state. Well, I, I know that's one thing I'm going to argue about. You know, um, it, it, I've seen, of course, the list of of everybody who's now uh, interested in doing a, a dispensary. Wow, and, and you it's, know, some it's, list. it's a heck of a six list. Six pages long. It's six pages long, folks, and it's it's people like people like um, the Crush Restaurant. Um, the Morton's, Greenspun family, the Greenspun the family, the Herbsts, um, Tom and Tom and um, uh, Paul from PT's Pubs. Oh, I knew they were looking at it, but I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. A lot of the Greenspun family. Yeah, family and family members. All family, over. family members. Wow. You know, um, I, I guess. Um, I'm not exactly one. I'm not 100 percent sure what, sure what the legislative intent was, right? Uh-huh. But uh, I'm not sure if this is actually what they intended. I mean, uh, I've had. I, I'm very happy to say that I've had uh, a few people come and, and, and talk to me. There's one. Uh, there's one uh, person who I'd, I, of course, I'm not going to identify. Of course, but you know, he already has a a, a medical. Establishment where he provides medical service, you know, uh, to to uh, to people uh, in in his city, and um, you know he's all about medicine. I, I like that. There's an, an, another group who's already running successfully a, a dispensary in another city, and uh, I've, I've actually seen their um, their uh, their grow operate not their grow operation, their dispensary operation firsthand. Very responsible. Very uh, 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 there's a lot of accountability, and they're not. I mean, they're, they're, they're not big guys. They're, they're uh, I would call it, you know, bigger than, of course, my uh, company, if I ever had one, what would it be? But yeah. they're not, by, by no means, are they, they're, not, they're not juggernauts. I always, uh, what I always envisioned them in, uh, for myself was some sort of a mid-sized company. Of course, they're well-funded. Uh, we're not talking about Shaggy, Doobie, and, and T-Bone coming in <laughs> and, and, and asking to, to start a medical marijuana uh, dispensary. But someone who is responsible, has a good track record, um, probably a small to mid-sized businessman right here in our community. And yeah. uh, from what I can tell, that's not exactly what we're talking about here. Yeah, like you say, they're juggernauts or or whales, you know, as we call them in Las Vegas. These guys aren't these guys aren't little, and the kind of money that they're throwing around, you know, has me worried about um, impropriety maybe going on, and maybe you know people people funding other people's campaigns, you know, you know favors going on. This is Las Vegas. Um, you know, and we're not known for the most transparent government and and process sometimes. Uh, I, again, in I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a little bit disappointed, and um, I just find it interesting that all of a sudden, you know, there, there's this redistribution, you know, it's proposed redistribution. Um, of course, now after these uh, what uh, over a hundred uh, applications are, are put in, and I guess everyone realizes that not everybody's friend's going to get a uh, is, is going to get a, a, a dispensary. You know, if that was the case, then every person that I talked to, they, they were, oh, I know somebody, I got a guy, I know a guy, you know, all this. That can happen. And if everybody that got a dispensary that told me that they were going to get a dispensary or that they've applied and they're going to get one because they know a guy, you know, I'd be a millionaire. Um, we have Mark Trebek on the line from California. Um, Mark, what are, you, what's, what are your some of the thoughts of uh, what, what's going on in Clark County right now? Well, thanks for having me on, Jen. As usual, uh, it's a pleasure and a privilege to to be with you on the show. Uh, and thank you, Councilman Barone, for coming in and give us giving us your thoughts. My first thought on this one is uh, this smells like um, something that's going to have to be hashed out in the courts if some of the municipalities or the applicants in these municipalities um, want to push it. Uh, there's no basis for... Clark County to grab um, more than uh, its proportionate share uh, of dispensary licenses. And maybe it's the justification is uh, population, but it doesn't seem like it with the fact that uh, the city of Las Vegas, in particular in North Las Vegas, having combined less than the number of dispensaries that the rest of unincorporated Clark County, I'm pretty sure that the population breakdown isn't going to support that. I think it's just a, I think it's just a dispensary grab, which means it's a money and power grab uh, by a, a commission that um, has in the past believed 
that there are rules that don't apply to it that apply to other people. Um, so on that one, uh, we can look forward possibly to some uh, litigation on that one simply because there are going to be aggrieved individuals who uh, are, were shut out of the Clark County process uh, that are going to want to operate under a more open and transparent process. Well, Mark, do you see that that this maybe taking people to court and going to court over this may delay the process even more than it's been already kind of pushed back? I think not in the sense that there are going to be certain operations that are going to be up and running, and those will be approved. Um, and it, it, to the extent that a properly tailored approach could um, be laid out, you wouldn't be stopping the process entirely. You would simply be stopping the overreach. So to the extent that Clark County, unincorporated Clark County wants to claim 10, and that's appropriate for its population, leaving 10 to the city of Las Vegas and however many to North Las Vegas, 10 to the city of North Las Vegas, or whatever is appropriate for its population and land mass. Um, that could be worked out, and that's one of the things that the local jurisdictions need to work out. But the other thing that you're going to be, that's going to inform the challenges to this is if, for example, the, uh, and we've discussed this on the program before, the Clark County, um, the, the people that they approve wind up like in the bottom half of all the people that uh, are ranked in the state process because the state, and the state made this very clear, the state is going to accept and rank every application presented to it. It's not accepting them from localities. It's not ex- accepting them from Clark County per se. They're accepting them from applicants. Marla McDade Williams testified to that at the last state hearing, and I've had multiple conversations with her confirming that very thing. Applicants are going to ap- apply to the state. So, I mean, you can imagine the situation in which you have, say, 100 or 150 applicants within Clark County, uh, or maybe more within its uh, multiple jurisdictions, and the ones that the county commissioners approve are found nowhere in the top 10 or even the top 20. Then you have a, an odor associated with that that will again support um, a challenge to that that was good, that's going to have to be in the courts. So really Clark County would be better off talking to their friends, working this thing out from a political standpoint, rather than simply announcing it as if in fact it is the state government and not uh, other legitimate state governments like the one in Carson City. Sure, like it's already a done deal. I mean, our friends in North Las Vegas uh, just have reached bu- budget agreements and... and, and are, yeah, we've been busy, you know. You've uh, been super busy, <laughs> you know, d- trying to save the city, um, you know, from, what, bankruptcy or balancing yeah, your budget? I mean, had we not come to uh, these tentative agreements with our bargaining units, we'd be in receivership right now. And, well, maybe if that's the case, perhaps uh, Clark County would have gotten our allocation anyhow, you know. <laughs> but what I'm getting at, I mean, we've been very busy. Yes. Uh, I'm very happy. And uh, again, a, a big shout out to all of our friends there and those unions that came to North Las Vegas' aid. Um, and uh, we've been busy trying to save, uh, save our city. We're low on staff. You know, uh, like three years ago, we had 2,000 uh, uh, people on, on staff. We're down to 1,000. And our team that, that's putting together, of course, all, all of our ordinance and all that is a very small staff, very, a very smart staff, a very handy staff. But we're small and we're working as hard as we uh, possibly can. And the thing is, our, our friends in Clark County, they knew that we were, we were doing this. We already have, you know, uh, a, a draft proposal for our, ordin- uh, for our land use and zoning ordinances. They, they know this, and it's not like we're sitting back. I, uh, no, I'm not taking the stab, of course, uh, uh, at our friends in Henderson. They have a mor- moratorium until July. And I was told by uh, an unnamed uh, county commissioner that, this ordin- uh, that, that what the, the action today was aimed more at them to get them going. Uh, but um, I guess uh, maybe that wasn't uh, the case. You know, I, I'm not sure exactly uh, uh, what m- prompted them to go ahead and uh, come up with this. Now, if it's uh, been, again, by population, four dispensaries, because uh, we're, we're, we're about... It somehow it's something just doesn't, doesn't add seem up. right. It doesn't add up. It, it doesn't add up to me in, because, I mean, just the fact that I know how large North Las Vegas is, and if... North Las Vegas is, you know, so large. How can four dispensaries serve the patients that they are supposed to serve? 
and it, it it can't happen. Not only that, that's other people going to be growing there themselves legally, of course, but they're going to be patients that are growing because they're outside of that that twenty five mile restriction. What, what I would have asked, uh, no, and uh, had they come and uh, had had our friends come and ask us about this, I would have asked, are there any studies uh, that will show per capita what the uh, residents of North Las Vegas need? Uh, as opposed to the residents of unincorporated Clark, uh, Clark County, as opposed to the residents uh, of uh, uh, of uh, Las Vegas, yes, yeah. uh, I'm sure that you know I'm, I'm I'm sure that there's probably a study that tells us uh, per capita what we can expect from uh, uh, from our residents in North Las Vegas, but that wasn't e- even uh, apparently brought into this equation. Um, again, um, we, we we look. Could it be that uh, my residents in North Las Vegas, uh, in my in my uh, ward, my minority majority ward? Could it be that we're going to have more uh, medical marijuana patients uh, because uh, my my, uh, my constituents, of course, might be into other alt- you know they might be have a more propensity for uh, alt- uh, 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 alternative medicine types as opposed to someone say in Summerlin. Not, none of that was ever brought into this equation. Not, nothing was brought into the uh, discussion, and I, I thought that was well. That's very disappointing. That that is very disappointing. I mean, these stats, those stats can be found. Um, at at the state level, um, but I mean they don't they don't open it up to like zip code to um, just layman or. So, but I mean that's something I I would speak to the state about. I would speak to Marla about and ask her if she can give you a breakdown of card carrying patients per zip code. I mean that would that would actually give you some hard numbers that you can kind of say, hey, you know this is skewed. This is not right. Um, you know, I just I'm I'm really worried that the the reason that they've done this is that they've overextended promises that they just can't keep in Clark County. And and that's what's going to get them in trouble with all these heavy hitters that are that are coming in and saying that, you know, they want a piece of Clark County and they want their own dispensary. It, you know, if a bunch of people lobbyists made promises that they just can't keep, you know, I think that's a very cogent point, Jen. I mean, it, it, it comes down to this this ongoing troubling concern that uh, I've had uh, about the process that uh, has been shared by uh, some of the commissioners in that and other um, people working for Clark County, which is that they seem to be getting ahead of themselves here. And uh, a more blunt assessment is that uh, they seem to be, uh, some of the commissioners, the some of the leading commissioners on this one seem to be wary and hesitant to embrace a transparent merits-based process because of that, of course, would might put them at odds with some of the promises that may have been made or some of the expectations of business as usual mm-hmm. uh, that uh, generally apply to other industries but which decidedly does not apply to this emerging industry. You know, that's... Um we're going um, going to be taking a break here in a second, um, but and we're, join us uh, again with uh, Isaac Barone from North Las Vegas. He's a city councilman for North Las Vegas Ward One, and we'll be right back. Did you know that over a hundred thousand people in America are dying on an annual basis due to prescription medications? Yet, marijuana has been around for 10,000 years and used as a medical resource and has never been known to kill a human being ever. But yet, we're not utilizing this great medication. Here at Karma's Holistic Health Foundation, it is our sole purpose to get you to your medicine as quickly as possible, all while following the state of Nevada's laws. Please call us today and we will get you your medical marijuana card at 702-388-1119. 702-388-1119 or visit us online at getmedicalmarijuananow.com. Thank you. Weekend 702 is a Nevada cannabis community. We are a 501c3 nonprofit that meets in Southern Nevada. We are a social group that started in Las Vegas for patient support. We've been active in the community for over five years. If you'd like to join us on any of our events or parties, please contact us through Facebook at Weekend 702 on Meetup at www.meetup.com forward slash weekend 702. Our website is www.weekend702.org. 
Be a part of the Nevada Cannabis Reform Revolution. Please join us and donate today. Welcome back. That sound means it's time for our weekend celebrity spotlight. Today in the spotlight, we're gonna we're gonna salute Bob Seger. Today is Bob Seger's day. Seger day. Uh, just recently on Twitter, Pete Seeger's death prompted a lot of confusion to the, uh, that. But Bob Seeger is very much alive. <laughs> so, our, our weekend four twenty spotlight goes to Bob Seeger. Happy birthday! And um, to one of my friends out there in in Radio Land, Ting. Happy birthday, Ting. Um, we're rejoining our conversation with um, North Las Vegas City Councilman from Ward 1, um, Isaac Barone, and we're going to take a call here um, from Ed and... Let me put it back to fix. Hello. All right, thanks, Clint. Hi, this is Ed Breslin. How are you? Hi, Ed. How are you? Great. How about you? Well, I'm doing good. What do you want to talk about today? Hello. 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 What would you like to talk about today? Oh, this is Ed Breslin from the External Company. Okay. okay. External Topical, topical Rub. Oh, okay. Is well, I tell you what, uh, I, I understand. I, I know Ed, and uh, maybe we could, uh, what we could do is we could finish up our segment with uh, uh, Council Member Barone and then move in to talk to you guys. Perfect. Oh. I'll just stay on hold. Thank you. Okay. okay. Sure Sorry about that. Thanks. Okay, um, so Councilman... So let, 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 let me get back to this concept that I'd like uh, uh, sure. Councilmember Barone uh, to address is about um, this concept of um, this transparent merit-based approach. Uh, do you, do you, are you, have you looked at the state approach? Are you confident uh, and comfortable with that? Do you think uh, North Las Vegas uh, needs to um, do something new or different or supplement that approach? How do you feel about that? Well, you know, um, from what I've seen from the state, you know, I mean, they seem like they're very open. It's going to be a very fair process with them. And now, I mean, we would very much like a chance to sit down and be able to, like, uh, choose, uh, I think, the, the, the ones that we think are very best for, for North Vegas, of course. Mm -hmm. But, number one, we don't have that kind of staff. You know, we, we, we don't have that kind of expertise. Mm -hmm. You know, wh what's going to tell us who's going to be a better fit for our, for our city? Uh, or we could probably figure that part out. But, really, do we really want to put our city at that kind of liability to decide who are, for, uh, at this point, who are four anointed ones, or uh, we're going to proceed as if, uh, as if we're still going to go after 10, um, I, I think, uh, 10 dispensaries. But and I, again, I know I, I myself, I've never used the product. I have lots of friends who've used it, of course, mm -hmm. um, and I've seen it. <laughs> I've smelt it quite a bit at my school. I've busted a couple of kids at my school uh, uh, for non-medical marijuana uses. But other than that, and other than going to one dispensary, one, uh, what do I know about it? And wh how much does my, d does my staff know? Um, I, I, I mean, I have a very smart, uh, uh, we have very smart and talented staff, the people, people who have left, and the people who are working on our, uh, on our um, ordinances, are, they're, they're top-notch people. But I think it's asking too much for us to be able to, to decide, you know, who the very, be very, very best people are. Uh, I, I think the state has uh, done us actually a favor by, uh, by uh, stepping forward and, and helping us, you know, hel helping to rank who the, the, the best people are in, in that kind of case. Um, at this point, w I just want to move as fast as we possibly can. Again, yeah. I, I, I definitely do want to move on. Um, we don't know what's going to happen, so I, I, I definitely want to move as fast as I can. And again, I invite everyone to please come to our uh, a meeting tomorrow. Uh, we, we have a very special town hall meeting. It'll be a short one, but meaningful, 4.30 at the North Las Vegas City Hall. And we'll be discussing, of course, uh, our land use and, uh, and uh, other regulations. That's great. So if uh, anybody that's interested in North Las Vegas, um, or if you just want to you know, see what's going on with North Las Vegas, please attend the North Las Vegas uh, City Council meeting tomorrow at 4.30. Uh, please be prompt and be there because it, the meeting will end quickly in about an hour. So don't straggle in. Please get mm -hmm. there early um, and, and attend and, and turn off your phones, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I will say I, I'll just add, uh, council member, uh, that uh, a, br a potential bright spot to this is that it does not limit the amount of cultivation centers or exactly. production facilities exactly. that, More that testing. can be, uh, uh, or labs, yeah, they can operate in North Las Vegas. And frankly, uh, maybe uh, to the extent, whether it's four or ten, to the extent that North Las Vegas presents with going with the state's transparent merits-based process, which is a very uh, wise thing to do, wide, 
why recreate a wheel that's already been created? Let the state rank the people and then take the top rankings from the state for your area. But the but you can make Las, North Las Vegas basically the go-to place mm-hmm. for people who want to do it the transparent, open, proper way uh, and possibly get uh, some additional business there because there's going to be a lot of a need for a lot of cultivation to support uh, the production facilities and the dispensaries, uh, because my understanding of it, or my experience with it, is that you could probably, you know, use between five and eight uh, typical cultivation centers to support a dispensary just transacting usable marijuana, and uh, that doesn't even count the additional uh, uh, product that's going to need to go into creating edibles, uh, infusions, tinctures and that sort of thing. Well, you know, another really interesting thing, Mark, is that uh, the one testing lab that uh, that applied uh, got knocked out of it. They were too close to a school. Yes. So, wow, so that's as fascinating. Of now, we have no testing. So we, now we have no testing labs. Well, so, there's no process without a testing lab. Without a laboratory, there's uh, there's no industry there. So They right. have to return to legislature for this, don't they? To have to revisit this at legislature? Well, not, not exactly. There's well, not there exactly? Possible applicants can apply in yeah. North, Las, North Vegas. Las Vegas. Hey, yeah. and North exactly. Las Vegas is mm-hmm. open, it got open arms embracing these testing labs. Uh, Heck, if I had my way, you know, I'd be very happy to welcome... Uh, not just uh, testing labs. I'm, I, I'd be very willing to uh, to uh, um, host and and um, help along a medical marijuana um, uh, research laboratory. For, you know, I mean, uh, anything to bring in, of course, brain power. And I think there'll be lots of brain power associated w- w- with such a facility. Um, yes, it, it's it's true. You know, that is a, a silver lining for all this that we will we'll have. You know, a chance. But there's more to this than, than just that. You know, in the past, you know, of course, our city. Um, we, we, our, our residents have taken a really tough time late, lately because, you know, um, of, of decisions, sometimes by our own past city council, sometimes by, by other entities. And, you know, this would just uh, would have been a, a nice vehicle um, for uh, to be able to keep you know, some money in our community yep. to help, you know, fund uh, things that are, we hold so near and dear to our hearts. Sure. Um, we're going to be shutting down one of our libraries here pretty soon. Oh, uh, no. part, part of it is because, quite frankly, lack of funds. Uh, and there's a, there's a couple of other, other issues. But, you know, quality of life issues, uh, like keeping our, our, our parks and libraries, uh, keeping our, our, our community centers open, right? I wanted to tie, of course, our, our, uh, the, our medical marijuana, um, um, you could say cash flow, to a little bit of that. Yeah. And so this puts a little bit of crimp uh, in my plans, you know, for, I, for for doing so. I think with that seventy percent of the was it seventy percent of the taxes need to go back to education mm-hmm. for for uh, not Las Vegas and uh, you know and for and for North Las Vegas or for for Nevada in general. So you know if you if we embrace the uh, the grows in North Las Vegas and the production facilities and the testing and maybe a research lab that you guys are going to get a lot of taxes back but still the four dispensaries are going to are are going to be poor you know to serve the community and and just you know you're right about our friends in Clark County. You, you know, you want to be friends. You want to talk to each other about what's going on. And just uh, this just seems like a little autocratic decision. The, the irony is, of course, you know, uh, again, and, you know, I, 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 I grew up in North Vegas. That's, uh, that's my town. You know, I'm, I'm, I do everything I can to help out my, uh, my city. Um, the, the one thing that I, I have to go out there and, and uh, combat is, of course, people's negative perceptions of our city. You know, in Spanish, uh, sometimes people out there in the community call us North Las Drogas, <laughs> which, you know, I, I, which I find very unflattering and very unfair. Yeah. You know, throughout this, you know, uh, I, I've heard uh, comments by people, oh, well, uh, get, your, uh, get, your mar- uh, get your marijuana in Las Vegas. So here, when we have a chance to grow it legally and to make <laughs> something positive out of it, yeah. you know, there are, there are others who are maybe uh, trying to take, uh, uh, trying to keep that uh, opportunity from us to do so. Yeah. Which, I thought, which I find very ironic. That, that is kind of ironic that North Las Vegas is, you know, kind of kind of out there about that, and then, then they're not allowed to have the dispensaries, you know. Um, I would note that, uh, that if uh, Clark County's rationale was waiting to see what other communities with moratoriums are going to do about it, they could have phrased their decision uh, as a conditional one, saying that uh, if... Henderson or if Boulder City or whatever locality is not going to proceed with uh, medical cannabis, then they will allocate those uh, other licenses in and around 
the jurisdictions that do want to. That would be a fair approach. That would be a fair approach, and I mean, and not only that, that I, it would be a fair approach, but it would also it also signal the people that are on their little duffs to get off their duffs. Guess what? If you don't do this, we're going to ha- take them, and that would have just been an effective um, way to get you know Henderson off their duff. Well, you know, in I think just, they could have just asked them. You know, I mean, uh, we are supposed to be like adults. We're supposed to be you know uh, uh, stewards for not just our own community, but you know, for the entire valley. Um, perhaps a, a nice little conversation, but um, the, uh, quite frankly, uh, I think they knew uh, that the county commissioners did know that North Las Vegas is moving. We never announced a moratorium. No, well, you didn't. We, we, we no. did not, and we, we were moving forward. Yes. And, uh, and, but they really didn't talk to us about it, and uh, to my knowledge, I don't think they talked to Henderson as well. Well, I did look at a little bit of the population centers, and I, I do see at least a, ra- a rationale, a population-based rationale, in that the city of Las Vegas, uh, uh, comp- if you if you parse them out based on population, it is roughly it roughly works out. But the process still is an unfortunate process. It it shows a, a disregard for working cooperatively with the other jurisdictions that are out there that are actively and affirmatively engaging the process, and and it is quite disappointing. It, it totally is. Um, so. Um, do you have any um, um more um to add to Councilman Brown? Do you? Well, um, if anything, uh, I know this uh, this puts a little bit more. Uh, how should I say? Um, a little bit more um, impetus uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we I, I know we're definitely going to be a little bit more liberal with uh with, with our uh, zoning requirements. You know, um, if this is the way it's going to get played out, well, maybe um. We could go a little bit even more liberal, uh, if, sure. if need be, what, with our business uh, licensing requirements, uh, with uh, uh, with uh, all of our uh, zoning uh, requirements. You know, I don't want. I'm not going to declare war, of course, uh, with Clark County. They're our friends. They are. Yeah. I, I, I don't. Uh, I don't support the decision. You know, I, I think. Uh, um, I think it, it could have been better thought out, and perhaps there might be a change in the future. We don't know. But, you know, uh, we want to work cooperatively. Uh, we want to make sure that this is something equitable, uh, something that's going to be good for our citizens. It's going to be good for people who, uh, who really need uh, this medical marijuana. I mean, my auntie, she, uh, she has cancer. It, it, it's terminal, you know, um, although she really hasn't said it she wants it. Um, I know I, I, I want to make sure that she's going to be able to uh, have access uh, to this. Uh, Should if, she, if she choose need, it? Yeah, if she chooses. Yeah, and, for and sure. I'm sure there's a lot of people in my community who are going to feel the same way. So, um, uh, again, um, uh, there is no need to be uh, combative over this. We can still sit down and, and uh, make uh, rational decisions. I, I just um, what I don't want is the fat cats in, the soci- in our society to, get, uh, to always do and always get what they, what, 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 what they always get, you know, quite frankly. Um, I, there, there's enough, um, I think there's enough uh, of opportunity for everybody uh, to not have to have you know, uh, a special uh, treatment for, for people who uh, do have access and do have you know, uh, more access than others. So in, in North Las Vegas is um, uh, moving forward with the dispensaries. Is your process going to be that they apply to the state and then they trickle down to North Las Vegas, or are you going to have a, a like a vetting process uh, like Clark County did? Yeah, like, like I said, I, I I don't think we have the uh, I, the staff. Yeah, I don't think we have the staff to, to, to vet them. I mean, I mean, I know who I would like, but of course, you know that that's that's neither here nor there. That's, exactly. That, that's you know that's not transparent. You know, <laughs> you know I, I would. Um, I'm sure I have, you know, I have friends who, if they apply, I would like to see them get it, of course. But I don't think that's a transparent. I, I don't. I don't think that's what the state intended. We think there's a better way. You know, we we, we think that that the state had a lot of wisdom in uh, granting the four the four dispensaries to, to Clark County. Um, uh, we we think they showed a lot of wisdom in uh, in the process, and we'd like to very much stick to uh, what the state intended. Yes. Yes, that's a good point. That's a really good point. Yeah, and what it comes down to is it leaves it leaves the proper um, decision making in the localities uh, on issues of zoning and placement rather than the merits because it's just easier. You don't need to devote staff. The state ranks them. The state's pro- process is a valid process, and you just take the top ranked uh, candidates, whether they be four or ten, and you analyze the top ranked candidates and the proper zoning places. Bam. Those are the ones that get in. Exactly, you know, and uh, I, I trust the state on this one, right? Um, 
and we, we'll see. You know, we're going to go on, and we'll, we'll see how, how this plays out. Uh, all I can uh, tell you, the only thing I can really say for sure is uh, I have a feeling people will, will be very, uh, they'll be gently pleased when they see uh, our ordinances, our zoning requirements, and uh, our business license. Uh, uh, you know, we, I think we've learned a lot. Uh, we're, uh, I'm, I'm part of a very um, uh, fast-moving, a very uh, nimble, and I think uh, a, a, a very, um, what's the right word, Consensus building, uh, North Las Vegas City Council, and so um, I, I think uh, that this, uh, our residents are going to be very happy to see what, what we have uh, in store for them tomorrow. So great! So everybody, come on down to North Las Vegas um, um, at four thirty to hear what's going on in their town meeting for medical cannabis. All right. So moving on to other news. Thank you, Councilman Barone, and. Um, We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so very much. Uh, uh, and, I, and again, I look forward to everyone, everyone in the community coming out and uh, meeting us. All right. Thank have you. Have a beautiful day. You see too. You tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Um, we have some uh, some other uh, we have some other callers on the line. We have Ed and um, yeah. Let Brian? me introduce. The, let me introduce. Those. Oh sure, uh, sure. The, 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 those are a couple of folks uh, I invited to uh, to onto the show today. Um, they are Ed Breslin and Brian Walker, and they are the developers of a uh, non-psychoactive uh, CBD product called External, okay. with a companion product called Internal, and uh, they have an interesting story that uh, the, the listeners might be interested in hearing about, about how they uh, developed that product and, and what their background is it uh, is in it. So let's see. Do we have them on the line? Ed, Ed and Brian, are you there? Ed and Brian, this is Ed. Mark, how you doing? And good afternoon from sunny California. Great, great. Hey, thanks. Thanks for coming on the show. So, um, Brian, tell us, um, how'd you come upon this? Uh, tell us, what is external and internal, and how'd you come upon it? Hi, Mark. How are you? Um, well, about five years ago, um, my daughter is a, uh, is a professional bill racer that is uh, in the equine with horses. And uh, she uh, called me up one day, said that her horse was really sore, couldn't put a saddle on the horse. Um, and uh, I kind of flashed back when I was a young kid. I used to walk through one of my neighbor's garages, and there was a big, uh, a big glass jar full of this marijuana leaves in this solution. And the guy was a uh, uh, concrete contractor, and that's how he kind of lived his life. He uh, took uh, this solution every day, went to work. Uh, he said it breaks, and at lunch he would uh, rub it on the areas that were sore, and uh, and it, that's how he kind of lived his life. And I kind of got a little vision as my daughter was badgering me about her horse and uh, couldn't afford the big vet bills that it was going to take. So I made that solution, and about three or four days later, the horse was okay. And... Uh, that's there, amazing. Kinda, we kind of took off, kind of. You know, I think I've the used this product for about five years, and uh, here we are. You know, I think I've used this product um, when I was in California. But you know what? We have a we have a break coming up right now, and let then we'll return to uh, to talk about your product. Okay, guys. All right. All right. The Von Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com Cannabis has been used as a healing medicine for over 5,000 years with no toxic side effects. Is it right for you? The professionals at Dr. Reefer are here to help. Now accepting new patients, make an appointment today at 428-0000. Bring your medical records, or if you don't have them, their staff will work to document your qualifying condition with a 99% approval rate. If you have any of the following conditions, cancer, AIDS, muscle spasm diseases, severe nausea, severe pain, Crohn's disease, glaucoma, or PTSD, call Dr. Reefer today for your free consultation and their money-back guarantee. If you don't 
qualify, you don't pay. Call 702-428-0000 to get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. Hi, welcome back. This is Jennifer Solis. We have Kurt Dukach and uh, uh, BJ Baker on the phone. We have Mark Terpik and we have Ed and Brian. They are uh, they are the inventors of a product called external and internal. And you were just explaining uh, how your how your daughter's horse was very sore and wouldn't take a saddle, and, and you invented this product. Could you continue with your story? Yes. Yeah. So uh, so we. In- it started out to be old school horse rub, and then my business partner said that uh, that we need to change that. So the name of our, uh, our product now is called Lame Away, and um, like it's it's just an anti-inflammatory, and it uh, and it and it it kills the pain. And the great thing about starting in the horse business is there's uh, no placebo effect. So so that's and you said you might have used it when you were in California, and that's exciting. That means that we're always bigger than we think we are well, and uh the great thing about uh nevada for us also is is that uh, i actually get to come to the national finals rodeo in uh las vegas this year yeehaw uh, set, up, set up a booth so that's very exciting for us well if you if you need any spokespeople I, i'll come out and help you guys all right i great, love nfr great, great. and i'm going to hand over to ed now and he's going to talk a little bit more uh and answer some questions for you hey ed how you doing I can't complain. And then you? You know, I'm, I'm doing well. And I know that I did use you guys' product. It was at one of our symposiums. I think I met both of you guys, maybe with Dan. We did. And we, we did meet. We did have the honor of meeting. Now I'm, I recollect that we had gotten in at 2 o'clock. We had driven from Los Angeles that night. I remember. To be at your symposium. So thank you for letting us allowing us to attend it was it was awesome to see how nevada is taking shape with medical cannabis ordinances and regulations and it's just exciting for us because we know as union manufacturers we could come to to clark county and washoe county and create jobs that that's the truth union jobs sustainable jobs that's dignified single-payer jobs and that is an honor for us to be able to do with a living wage yep and uh, the product, I, I will have to tell you, I used the product. I sprayed it on on different areas that were hurting, um, and it it did. It took the pain away. And um, I was working. I worked an eight hour shift that day. And before I had the product, I was aching. And and I used it externally, and it didn't really have a. It didn't have a. Um, didn't make me feel loopy or anything. It just took the pain away. And it almost seems like it's like. Like it's like magic it. in a way because it's it doesn't give you a loopy feeling. It doesn't give you a, a high. It doesn't really give you any of those effects. What it just does is it takes the pain away. To, to it's almost like, wow, did that just really work? Yeah, that's uh, guys, it's because question, it's not question. activated. What? I know we love THC. Yeah, guys, guys, THCA question, and all question, the acids question. is what our company focuses on. Sure, those are the true anti-inflammatory. And we're just seeing great results across the board. Um, it's on, it's awesome to watch people that have been told that they never be able to walk correctly again with diabetic neuropathy, and are now dancing. And wow, that's amazing. Yeah, and it's just the science is incredible, and I love just sitting with with the PhDs and the researchers. And, and in college, I didn't like organic chemistry, but now I would consider just fascinated listening to researchers and PhDs and, and the doctors in our industry that are talking about the cannabinoids and terp- terpenes. Do you have a website? And the endocannabinoid system. Do you guys have a website, an informational website that kind of tells about your product? Yeah, and we're anxious to, anxious to uh, put Nevada down a, as a locator also. So again, we're, we're uh, externalrub.com. That's no E, it's X-T-E-R-N-A-L rub.com. Again, one more time, it's just X, the letter X, T R N A L Rub dot com. Hey guys, Mark, Mark here. So my understanding is this to start out uh, as a horse application. So so if I use it, can I win the Kentucky Derby? <laughs> <laughs> hey Mark, um, again, all mammals have the same endocannabinoid system. So this works on dogs, as you know. We've got no dogs hunting like puppies again. And so uh, just, how did you guys first learn to put this on humans? Amazing application, and this is what the body's looking for. 
How, how'd y'all, what was the first human application that you that you saw success in? Yourselves, I'm your family? I'm going to pass Brian because Brian has the first human application. Other than, uh, let me just say one thing. My Mexican grandma was doing this way back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Yep. Uh, first application, actually, this is what, uh, I, I, I made a few bottles and I went to the horse shows with my daughter and some of the older trainers, um, I let them use it. And what they said was, is they, they came back and they said it was working wonderfully on the horses for their inflammation, on their hocks and, 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 and down their legs and stuff. But what they, were, what they wanted me to know is, is that the, the arthritis in their hands went away. Yeah. So I that, see that. that right there was the first applicant. And these are older, these are older ladies. They've been, they've been riding horses for 45 years. I mean, their hands are sore. And that, and that was our first application of uh of actually finding out what it I, I knew it worked because of the guy who who uh i seen all the time but but firsthand it was the it was the older ladies uh that were the trainers of the horses so guys how, how did you get it from an external application to an internal what 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 made you think of that and and how did that uh come well, into being guys guys well, yeah, there? Oh, sorry about that well we had a we had a dispensary at one time, and uh, they were, uh, we just watched the medicines coming in, and we had a little, uh, we used to make some cookies for our patients, and uh, we just started making internal. I figured, uh, I figured it wasn't that hard. Our application for topical was uh, working on THCA, so I figured the THCA should work, um, should work internally also, and um, started making it, and then we gave it away. We gave it away to our sickest patients, and uh, they started getting better. And we just kept on making it. Now we're now we've done about nine thousand bottles, and right. uh, and we uh, we're getting great success. We have a lot of people that are uh, that are feeling good. How many states are you in now? Um, we're in three, covering Nevada. We're in, uh, we're in California, we're in Washington, and we are uh, in Colorado. We're manufacturing in each state, um, and it looks like we're coming to Nevada pretty soon. That's awesome. That's awesome. What it, What's the approximate cost, um, you know, per ounce for this that, that you would charge to the patients, and, and how much do you use? I mean, I can tell, for, you know, from firsthand use, it was the sprays or two and then rub it in. Um, yeah, well, and so our, the bottle, the bottle ounce, lasted a long time, but what do you know about yeah, our, our two ounce bottles? Uh, donations in California are running a ride around anywhere between twelve to fifteen dollars retail. Wow, that's and and you know I'll have to tell you that that bottle that you guys gave me it lasted me about two to three weeks, and and I was using it almost you know, almost nightly because I have, you know, really sore muscles and, and sore stuff. So I was spraying it off. Yeah, that was, a, that was one of our problems is, is early in business. We should have made the bottle smaller. <laughs> <laughs> that's, actually, that's oh. a joke between me and my partner because it does last a long time. And it seems as you use it, um, you, you start feeling better and better. So Yeah, the bottle you gave me, I, I gave to a patient who had fibromyalgia, and she said it worked wonderful for her. So, so thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and we want the reason you know people say, well, how come it's so so affordable? Because we want everyone in America to be able to have the same impact that cannabinoids and terpenes have on the body. There's there's we we know that we can make it at this cost across America and employ and employ people. That's that's awesome, and you know, and that's what it's about: giving medicine out to patients that is affordable and also affords the people that are making it a living wage. Yeah. So, who exactly. do you have to do? Hey, guys, tell tell me, uh, uh, do you have any endorsers for your product yet? Uh, well, I can tell you that the there's a a ballet in Seattle that happens to use our product. There are MMA fighters. Look up Team Black. One just was in the World uh, World Team Muay Thai over in China right now. And our products are used by top condition athletes, at horse professional horsemen that get thrown off horses all the time, to down to grandma that don't try and take her bottle away from her. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I will tell you that uh, I will tell you that Kurt and I shared a bottle, and when he said that this patient needed a bottle, I was like going, "Oh, oh, not mine." Kurt's like, "Oh, okay, well, I'll give mine. Uh, I have my cookies." So yeah, so I- I'll endorse it. <laughs> so, what are your next and steps, the guys? The thing about our product is uh, it doesn't scare. I, I heard a, a caller talking about how his grandmother was uh, sick or, or something and didn't really know if she wanted to use the cannabis. And this is a great alternative and a bridge for the older generation who still has a stigma of uh, cannabis is, is whatever. Because they're starting to come now, and it's very easy to tell grandma, hey, just go spray your knee, relax, it's okay, it's medical cannabis, it's not going to hurt you. And it's a good bridge to, uh, to, the, to the older generation, you know. Well, there there is an article that came out, um, you know, first in High Times, and it talks about uh, different drugs that are better or worse than cannabis. And all of the drugs that are that are used for fibromyalgia, they're showing that cannabis is actually a better drug than any of the regularly prescribed drugs for fibromyalgia and fibromyalgia is is a disease of like chronic pain uh fatigue depression uh also certain muscles will go numb and and they will start hurting and i i I have largely beat my fibromyalgia you know um or or tamped it down but i will tell you that when i get those sore or numb spots in my back or you know on my arms that when i put the, when i put the rub on them it really did work and it and it, of course it didn't give me the high feeling or anything like that right well we're going to have to get you our bath soap because Ooh. that's uh, that's what a, a lot of a lot of our patients around uh, in, in different states are using for uh for for fibromyalgia and, 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 and yeah, that article you talked about, hi, this is Ed again, that article you, you referred to, uh, I, I read it the other day, too, and I posted it on our Facebook page, which is uh, external use only, X-E-R-N-A-L, okay. use only. And I really, really look towards the International Society of Cannabis Clinicians, who are just an uh, awesome group of, of courageous doctors that are that are taking the step and, and learning as much as they can about the application of cannabinoids. And uh, I've got a couple plugs in for our, our good friend, uh, Clint Werner from Marijuana Gateway to Health, an awesome book that he's written. We take a lot, we take, I take a lot of information from his site too. And it's just uh, the fibromyalgia, we see that with the bath soak, when the body hits this, the, the soak of the, in the water, the cannabinoid receptors are mollified wherever the skin hits the body. So wow. we're getting fibromyalgia patients in some cases. And I, just let me digress and say that neither Brian and I are, are medically trained. We, uh, we're just good friends for 40 years. That's awesome. Back to fifth grade. Well, we're um, we're running short on time. Thank you okay. for joining us today, and um, make sure to check out their website at external um, external dot com and their Facebook external page external Rev. only external rub dot com external rub dot com. Um, for our final bit of news, we have a patient's first meeting this Saturday at two p.m. at the Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf across from UNLV. Um, so please join us if you have any concerns or any thing that you'd like to ask as a patient or you'd like to become a patient, please join us at 2 p.m. at the patient's first meeting. And that's all for us today, this Tuesday. You guys be safe out there, okay? Goodbye.